Well, what's up you guys? It's your girl, baby, back again. Make sure you guys mark your calendars because my first EP, my first mixtape, my first album is coming out on September the 11th and it's called Weddings Off. So make sure you guys set your calendars in pre-order because when it's going, it's going, it's gone. It's not really going to run out. It's streaming. But make sure you guys stream my music on that day. Uh, in the meantime, in between time, you guys can still um, check out my singles. I do have five singles out right now. Dame Dash, Pop Star, because I'm a pop star, rock star. Keep talking tough and I'll pull your cord. I'll block you hard. I have that song. I got uh, Uzi, Uzi Extendo. And I have my own personal favorite song, which is called Lonely. And Lonely is my Twitter song because I wrote that song on Twitter because Twitter fingers will bring you trigger fingers. Wait, Twitter, trigger fingers turn to Twitter fingers. Got you. You get what I'm trying to say. Live your best life unapologetically happy. Let me know how you guys like my music and enjoy this video. Cardi B used Chunkla Magic to take that microphone and connect with, with, with old girl's third eye during a concert because she threw water on her. The girl threw water on Cardi B because Cardi B asked for water to be thrown on her body and old girl accidentally got Cardi right in her face. First of all, Cardi is loving hip hop alum. She knows how to dodge a drink like nobody's business. They was flipping over tables and stuff like that. And old girl thought it wise to toss that cup up and hit that girl right in the face and caught that microphone between the eyes. And I applaud Cardi B because you got to authentically let out that emotion. Now, I will also say this though, when are we going to stop being so violent towards one another? But I'll also say this though, Cardi B is still grieving the loss of her nephew. What was off takeoff? And I'll also ask this question, just like Cardi B chunkla magic, that bitch right in the middle of her fucking forehead. Excuse my French. I ain't calling her a bitch to call her a bitch. I just don't know her name. I guess I could look at the police report, but the bitch should have never filed that shit because they was both wrong. But I digress. But when Cardi B did that, was she like still in trauma over the fact that somebody took a precious person from her like that could have been wave her she has a child a little boy that she has to worry about facing east atlanta ass fucking violence because niggas don't know how to appropriately disengage from their anger she don't either clearly but at the same time, when do we start giving people a little bit more grace for living through some of their hardest moments? On stage, she still went to work to bring y'all the best show she possibly could in the midst of the fact that she's going through some of the deepest grief I'm sure she's felt in a long time, if she's ever felt grief that deeply. And now we are out here fucking with these people, throwing water in their faces and shit like that. And again, like I was saying, let me ask this question, because like I said, my great grandmother, it's been a story that's been passed down in our family as if it's just in jest, but my great grandmother shot three people in they ass. And that's like the punchline of it. Cause Lizzie wasn't really trying to kill them people. She wasn't trying to kill them. If she was, she'd have shot them somewhere else, but she shot them all in their left ass cheek. I don't know if it was a left, but she shot them all in their, the fleshy part of their asses. Like, like a real marksman, three people. And it's like, that was like her sparing them, but letting them know also how angry she was. But 
why do you need to let people know how angry you are through an act of violence? It's because you still want that person in your life in some kind of way, but you want to get them back with the get back. The person that whoever offset take off, whoever take off was arguing with, was they trying to get him back in some type of way to where they, he knew that they were offended by whatever it was that he possibly potentially ever, you get what I'm trying to say. Like, were they trying to get him back, but not really expecting him to like die? Because I really believe like how that, remember how that white boy got off for, for being affluent I believe that black people suffer from affluence too, but whatever the negative reverse or inverse converse of that is, because like, we don't necessarily live in reality when you are coddled by your parents and made to be angry, but can't express your emotions, but then you're being beat on and trampled on and you live through some of the hardest things in your life. You shooting somebody and taking their life isn't really like that bad because you've seen some things that were worse than that. And here you go sending somebody home to meet their maker. You're doing him a favor. But at the same time, if you really process the grief that you felt that caused you to pull that trigger, you would think twice about that or you'd be in remorse or you turn yourself in or you'd say sorry god damn I mean my god giving people some type of closure but that's not the way the world works the world don't work to give you closure even if it's like uh something that's completely and totally understandable but at the same time again like if Cardi B didn't get her closure how does she diffuse her anger enough to not Wampa bitch in the middle of her motherfucking crown chakra wouldn't with, with a microphone. Should she take some time off of work? The girl got bills to pay. The world don't stop running just because she lost somebody, but also the hurt don't stop because the bills need to be paid. So how do you find an appropriate balance between what it is that you've suffered through? Because we suffer. We're sent to the earth to suffer. Now pray. Suffering breeds perseverance. Read the book of Job and read God's response to what Job told his ass. Job said, God, why would you do this to me? I'm all fucked up. You Because the Bible in the book of Job, it starts on a bet. God and the devil bet that they couldn't, that they could, that the devil said, I, could, I bet I could make your most valuable servant murder himself, kill himself, commit suicide. And God said, bet. Um, Job, go ahead and go get Job. And God let the devil torment Job to the point of suicide, but didn't let him commit suicide because Job would never do something like that. But the shit just kept on coming because that's how the world is. That's how earth is. That's how we're designed to, that's what we're designed to suffer through because all that suffering breeds perseverance. That's a, that's a, that's a, a passage out of the Bible. And that perseverance is supposed to make you into a better, uh, more godly being, because when you can forgive God for doing the crazy shit, for taking your takeoff out of your life, when you can forgive God for doing that type of shit to you, then you can forgive the person that took him. Then you can forgive yourself for chunkla magic in the fuck out that bitch in her fucking soul and knock that fit that knocked her fucking closure back a few inches. Like you can forgive that person. You can forgive them for, for trying to press charges on you when you should be pressing charges on them. Like you get what I'm trying to say. Like when you can really like trust in God and trust in what he's doing, then all that other shit that happens to you is simply obsolete. But when do we begin to learn to trust God and how do you trust God? How do you diffuse your anger enough? Cause if you're not mad at God, how you mad at them? God made them. God made that person do what they did. So the real person, the real culprit that you should be angry at is God, but thy will be done. Like you can't lash out in anger while at the same time you got to figure out how to elevate yourself to the place to where you can still express whatever that grief is that you just felt for experience what it was that you just experienced it's like a catch-22 you can't be in the movies unless you're in a movie you can't be fucking you can't get a sad card unless you've been in a movie but you can't be in a movie until you have a sad card it's a catch-22 how the fuck that's gonna work somebody got to take a chance on you you got to take a chance on you how you gonna forgive the unforgivable Take a chance. See what the fuck that feels like. And once you understand what it feels like, then you got to ride with that emotion until you don't longer feel it no more. And that's true elevation.